Hello, I'm Org, and in this video we're going to look at the new German ground attack aircraft coming in patch 1.7. Um, just starting off with some general thoughts on the line. For a long time, I've kind of been looking forward to this as the Stuka line of ground attack aircraft. But, well, as you can see in the game, they're not actually all that Stuka y. There's one Stuka, the JU87G, at tier 5. But I was kind of expecting, you know, an early model, you know, say the B to D, kind of sitting at tier 4, maybe in Henschel 50, whatever it was, the early biplane dive bomber that Germany used throughout the war at tier 3, and, you know, I think there was a JU-187 or a 287 or a 387 that Junkers proposed to replace them, but instead of all those aircraft, this... The line kind of turns into a failed heavy fighter line from tier 7 up. So, <coughs> I see kind of not what I was expecting when I heard German ground attack aircraft coming into the game, but it's still, well, they're a lot of fun to be honest. And we'll just start off with the tier 4 aircraft, the Focke-Wulf 189C. And this aircraft kind of has existed in real life. It was historically a tactical reconnaissance aircraft and kind of army cooperation. And well, they put this C version up as a proposal for a ground attack aircraft, but the Germans decided to build the Henschel 129 instead. Which is kind of a shame because this is a fairly fun aircraft to fly. It's not particularly great in any capacity. It's got four fairly light bombs, only 50 kilograms, two 20mm cannons and four machine guns, which gives it kind of all right performance in the ground attack role, but not spectacular. It's a bit worse than the BSH-2, but not a lot. But in exchange, this aircraft's more maneuverable and faster than the BSH-2, so it can defend itself a bit better. And well, it's a bit more fun to fly just because you can do maneuvers in it. Oh, and it's also with a tail gunner, that's another big advantage of the BSH-2. But in general, it's fun, but not overly great would be my overview of the Focke-Wulf 189. And it also looks really ugly, especially the tail gunner position. That just looks awful. I'm not really sure how the tail gunner can see because he's just got these three little tiny windows. You know, one pointing to the left, one pointing to the right, and one pointing up, and I'm just not entirely sure how you're supposed to use that gun, or those guns, because you get two of them in the end.
at tier 5 we have two options. The first, and the one that I think most people will end up taking, is the JU-87G, which has two options for armament. The first is two 20mm cannons, which is a bit weak, but I did alright with it. And the second option is two 37mm cannons, and when it's equipped with these two cannons, I would argue that the JU-87G is probably the best tier 5 ground attack aircraft. It's going to be probably a bit controversial because the IL-2 also gets two 37mm cannons, plus a bunch of other guns, plus rockets and bombs, whereas the JU-87 only gets the 37mm cannons and nothing else. But the big advantage these 37mm cannons have over the IL-2 and everything else is that they crawl down very, very, very quickly, whereas the IL-2's guns don't even come close to cooling down at the rate these ones do. So the JU-87 can put out very powerful firepower consistently over a very long time, which the IL-2 can't match. Uh, the big weakness of the JU-87 is that it basically can't really defend itself. It's only got 420 hit points, and I'll just double check that, because I see it's not fully upgraded. And when fully upgraded, it goes to 500 hit points. It's also got well, two machine guns in the tower and fully upgraded. And it's just slow. It's not particularly maneuverable. 27 seconds to turn full 360 and only 56 degrees per second rate of roll. So, it tends to get killed very easily by enemy aircraft. Oh, and these 37mm cannons, they kind of fire slow, so they're not very useful against enemy aircraft. It's just, you're kind of lucky if you hit something with them, at least on the test server. So, that's kind of JLE 7. Very good ground attack, not so good at defending itself. The other option at tier 5 is the Henschel 129B, which historically kind of started replacing the Stuka towards the end of the war in the German ground attack role. But I think in the game, at least as it currently stands, I don't see many people taking the HS 129. Quite near. It's not a bad ground attack aircraft. I'm just going to say that straight off the front. I had fun flying it it did all right at its job. It was just worse at ground attack than the J87. And that's mostly got down to the armament. Um, you get two machine guns and two 20mm cannon, which at tier 5 is kind of weak for ground attack aircraft. And then you get kind of three choices of outboard weapons. You can either have four 50kg bombs, which I didn't fly out with, so I can't really comment on them, but it's the same as you had on tier 4 on the Buffalo 189, so it's probably not that great. Or you can have a single 30mm cannon, or a 37mm cannon, and I did fly it with a 30mm, but I didn't really see any advantage 
and choosing that over 37 millimeter. And well, end of the day, one 37 millimeter cannon plus a few other guns on the Hentral 129 is weaker than the two 37 millimeters on the J87. And there's just no real advantage in this aircraft. I mean, you might think that it might be better at defending itself, especially when you see that it's got 700 hit points, which is substantially more than the JU-87, but in exchange for getting those extra 200 hit points, you lose your tail gunner, and you're actually... No, you're not. You're basically the same speed. Technically, you're a couple of kilometers an hour faster, but that's meaningless. But you are actually a lot less maneuverable. 35.7 seconds to turn 360 degrees which means that basically everything can outturn this and you've got no way of defending yourself once somebody gets behind you and well the only advantage I could see that this has is that the 20mm cannons and the machine guns can do some damage to enemy aircraft more consistently than the J87's 37mm cannons but because of the maneuverability problems, you're basically not going to get a chance to actually shoot at people who long enough to kill them with those guns. So at the moment, I'm kind of not seeing much use for the HS-129 in-game. Honestly, it might actually be better off to pull this one out of the lineup and put it in as a premium aircraft, because it is about right for a premium, as in it's worse than the others. It's probably comparable with the IR-2 mod. And, well, Wargaming could make some money from people that want to fly it, since it is a fairly famous World War II aircraft. Let me see there, I'm also kind of hoping that they're going to split off a second gym ground attack line and have this one lead somewhere else, so maybe they'll keep it in for that reason. That would be nice. At tier 6, we have the JU-88P. JU-88 was, of course, designed as a fast bomber before the war, but this is a ground attack variant of it. For armament, again, it's got no bombs, but you get the choice of two 37mm cannons, the same as on the Stuka Matea beforehand, or a single 50mm cannon. And, well, I love the 50mm cannon on this thing. It just tears apart ground targets, no problems. It cools down fairly quickly, not quite as quick as the 37mm cannons, but still very quickly. And all around, I'd actually say this is the best ground attack aircraft in the German line. Well, tier for tier, you know what I mean. The downsides of this is that... I was going to say it's not very maneuverable, because it isn't, but it's more maneuverable than I thought. It's only slightly worse than the Stuka, and it's actually much better than HS-129 at turning, and because it's gone up a tier, that's even better. It's also got decent hit points at 800, it's got a tail gunner, although only a single 13mm tail gunner, so well, that's still alright. And the big downside of it though is that it's actually fairly slow compared to kind of the other ground attack aircraft in this line, and the 15mm cannon is kind of useless against the aircraft. It's, it basically fires one shot a second and kind of if that shot misses then you've got to wait a second for a second chance and that can be frustrating. However, when it does hit, it just wrecks in the aircraft. I've seen Corsairs go from like full health to basically nothing after one shot. So that's fun. And I said this is a great ground attack aircraft. But lacking in other respects, so it's fairly balanced. At tier 7, we have the Measurement 265. It is kind of the first of the, well, what I call the failed heavy fighters. This aircraft was designed to replace the Messerschmitt 210, so it competed with the Messerschmitt 410. But the Germans decided not to use this design because, well really it was just more novel. It would have to set up better production lines, it would take long time production, it would be slower to produce. So they went with the Messerschmitt 410, which we use a lot of parts from the 210 and the 110, so it was easier for the production. 
in the game, this little craft, it's probably my favourite of the new Jim Venter aircraft. It's a bit average as a ground attacker. It just gets two machine guns, two 20mm cannons, and two 30mm cannons, which you might note is only slightly more firepower than the HS-129 had in the tier 5. Yeah, so it's a bit weak. It also gets two bombs, two 250 kilo bombs, which are kind of, I know they're pretty good for the tier. But where this aircraft really does well is as a low altitude heavy fighter. Its top speed, level flight, is 630 kilometers an hour. And I've gotten very close to that by using boost, just in level flight. In a dive it can reach 750 kilometers an hour which you might recognise as being kind of insanely fast, even at tier 7, especially at low altitudes. And while the armament's kind of weak for ground attack, it's actually pretty good for destroying enemy aircraft. But what really makes this aircraft excellent is that, at the moment, its boost is just intense. Like, you get 30 seconds of it, and about 10 seconds of boost is enough to take you from kind of your cruising speed of 450 kilometers an hour up to 550, 570. And it's got pretty good energy retention as well, so you'll just go racing past people at 570 kilometers an hour, especially in the ILs. And so long as you don't turn, you'll just race away. You might think this would actually be a good, you know, IL killer, but it's got one weakness which it took me a while to figure out, and that's this optimum airspeed is actually much higher than the Soviet equivalents. So if you stop and try and turn with the ILs, they'll actually be able to match you just because you'll go down to the speed that they're good at. So as long as you keep your speed up, you'll do right. I mean, theoretically, the German attack aircraft can outturn the ILs, but only at the speed that they want to do it at, whereas the ILs do better at low speeds. So just something to watch out for, keep your speed up and you should be able to kill the enemy attack aircraft no problems, and then this aircraft, it can even dominate heavy fighters below a thousand meters. And like, even above a thousand meters, low tier heavy fighters will have a problem dealing with this, just because that boost allows it to stick its nose up in the air and just chase them up. Like, even a couple of times with same tier heavy fighters, I've given them problems by doing that, just by, you know, stick my nose up and boost, and they either can't keep up with me, or I can catch up to them. So, this will be a very powerful aircraft at tier 7 for people that know how to fly it right.
tier 8 we have the Ninja Schmidt 329 which well it basically feels just like a slight improvement of the Ninja Schmidt 265 but it's not quite so powerful in the heavy fighter role it's slightly faster basically it gains about 50 kilometers an hour over the 265 in all regards you know dive speed cruising speed it's maximum speed that you see kind of after using boost and its firepower is also pretty good you have the option of four 20 millimeter cannons or four 30 millimeter cannons both of which are decent in ground attack and also decent in air to air combat it's just enemy aircraft have kind of caught up with you a bit more so it doesn't feel quite so overpowered as the Schmidt 265 does and otherwise there's not really much to say about this aircraft at least I don't have much to say about it it does all right in ground attack but I would pick the IL-20 over it since uh, one thing I should mention it's still got two 250kg bombs which is kind of the one weakness of this aircraft and actually of this entire line is they don't carry much external ordnance so that while the IL-20, for example, gets roughly equivalent firepower, they get four 23mm cannons as opposed to four 30mm cannons, and actually the IL-20 can also have two 57mm cannons, so again, let's just say roughly equivalent, but the IL-20 gets the advantage in that it carries two bigger bombs, and it can also get 12 rockets. But it's still fairly balanced because the Mutter Schmidt 329 is a lot faster. As in, it gets an extra 250 kilometers an hour in dive speed. And I think even in maneuverability, it's actually still slightly better than the IL-20. Yeah, actually, not even slightly. It's got about 10 second advantage in turning 360. But like I say, you want to keep your speed up to do that because the IL-20 will beat you if you're kind of below 200-ish kilometers an hour on this thing. So I mean it's still fairly balanced, it's just not quite as good as the IL-20 in ground attack role, but it does all right in ear to ear, whereas the IL-20 doesn't. At tier 9, we have the Mirschmidt 1099B2. Which, well, it kind of continues just the theme of this line. It's really fast. I often kind of cruise around about 600 kilometers an hour in this thing. And when I boost, I can easily kind of get up to 850 or so, which makes it fun because enemy fighters of lower or even equal tier. They can't keep up with you, so you can just run away quite easily. And even ones that can keep up with you, you kind of just get a lot of, you know, that speed allows you to just set the enemy where you want them, I bet, you know, within your AA cover or underneath your friendly fighters, and they don't really have much choice. Um, this one kind of gets two options for armament, or well, three technically, it gets four 30mm cannons, or four upgraded 30mm cannons or a single 50mm cannon and that 50mm cannon I flew out with it once, it was pretty good at ground attack but as you kind of expect it's not that great at hitting enemy aircraft which is kind of the strength of this line compared to the IL line 
um, a game that only carries the same 250 kilo bombs, but now it gets four of them instead of two. But that's kind of not as good as it would seem because the ground targets have gotten a bit stronger and often you'll need two bombs to kill a target that previously you would have got by killing one or you know one bomb and a lot of guns as opposed to one bomb in tier 7 or 8. Overall I'm kind of feeling that by this point the ground attack capabilities are a bit weak but I'm actually kind of okay where they are at this point. The IL-40 definitely does better in the ground attack role, but actually not a lot better. Like, I just kind of feel that at tier 9 and 10 in particular, the ground targets have gotten so strong that comparatively the ground attack aircraft feel weak. But this aircraft's actually not that far behind the IL-40. It's kind of like the previous ones, and that it's slightly worse in terms of forward firing armament for killing ground targets, and it gets a lot less ordnance. But in exchange for that, again, it's a lot faster and more manoeuvrable. One thing I'd like to say though is that the tail gunner feels a bit weak and I'm not entirely sure why. Like I've seen people do really well with the tail guns but my one just doesn't seem to want to do much in the way of damage. Upgraded, you actually get three 20mm machine guns shooting back at enemies. But they just don't seem to do much. Maybe it's because of your speed or... Actually, that could well be what it is. If I don't have long range or anything upgraded, my tail guns probably just can't shoot far enough to hit the enemies that are kind of trailing away behind me. At tier 10, we have the Messerschmitt P1102B, which, to be honest, is not actually a huge improvement over the tier 9 aircraft. It's got four 30mm cannons, and they are better cannons, but only barely enough to make up for the fact that you're only hitting tier 10 targets now, and they're a fair bit tougher than tier 9s. It's also got the exact same bomb loadout as the Tier 9, the four 250kg bombs. Uh, the tail gunners have been reduced from three 20mm tail guns down to two, but again, I, for some reason I just didn't feel that the ten, Tier 9 tail gunners were particularly strong, and neither of these ones. And the only thing that's really changed is that the speed, char speed characteristics of the P1102 has increased, but again, not by all that much. So, kind of this one, it's actually probably my second least favourite aircraft in this line after the Henshaw, just because I feel that kind of the progression of the aircraft up this tier, this one. They just kind of get weaker tier by tier. So tier 7 is great, tier 8 is good, tier 9 is feeling a bit weak, and tier 10, it's like the improvements they've added to this airframe and that it goes a bit faster, has slightly better guns, don't kind of make up for the fact that you're now facing tier 10 aircraft. And also the other problem is it kind of sucks a bit more in the ear to ear role, mainly because Fighters at this tier can go way above your altitude performance. We should just mention this, that like the altitude performance of the P1102 is 900 meters, whereas down at tier 9 it was 880, and tier 8 when it pops up I believe was about 800, no 850, and Schmidt 265 is probably around 800 then. Anyway, you've kind of 
gained your altitude performance at a lot slower rate than with the enemy fighters are, particularly heavy fighters. Like, they all kind of do very well under a thousand meters. Probably the P1102, it's under 1500 meters, is the bit where it does really well. But you're much less likely to find tier 10 aircraft flying below 1500 meters than you are to find tier 7 aircraft flying below a thousand meters. That's kind of my feelings of the um, decline in the air to air capability of this thing. But I think it's actually pretty good. I think a lot of it's actually just, as I said in the last one, that tier 10 ground, tar ground targets are actually a lot stronger than tier 10 ground tech aircraft, because I find that the IL-40 is actually not that much better than this in the ground attack role, except that the IL-40P gets a lot more ordnance, which is the only real weakness of this aircraft. So in that respect it's kind of balanced with the IL-40, but it just doesn't feel, uh, the IL-40P I should say, but it just doesn't really feel that fun to fly because it feels a bit weak. Well, that's kind of all I have to say about these new line of German ground attack aircraft. I'm not sure if I'll go up them soon or not. I'll go up them eventually because why not? But I think especially at low tiers they're going to be very good ground attack aircraft and then kind of by the time you get to 7 and 8 they're actually going to be pretty decent low altitude heavy fighters. So it should actually be a pretty fun line for all of you to get in and try. Anyway I hope you've enjoyed this video and I'll see you all next time.